Hello, oh, it's Mikael Sam Possible. Mikael, my name is Taffrey16. Welcome back to another reaction video, and welcome to my third reaction to the day today. So, we're actually going to watch episode two today. We did episode three first, and then episode one second, and now we're doing episode two third. Why? I don't know. That's how we did it. Uh, I think we're also going to be halfway for the show, because I think this show's only six episodes as well. So, let's go ahead and watch it. All right, let's go. The headlines tonight, Portillo's teeth removed to boost pound, exploded cardinal preaches sermon from fish tank, and where now for man raised by puffins? By puffins? Goddamn. Now that's some shit I gotta see. Yes. Yes. Ah. On the day today -to tonight, woman describes her parents kidnap hell. She told me that a very heavy um, officer sat on her back. Others sat on her legs. She was then handcuffed and broad sellotape was um, taped around her ankles so that she couldn't walk. And new Welsh minister in incomprehensible energy outburst. The main benefit of our emotion is because it is competitive. It permits the production of an electricity shipper, competitive, and then uh, enhance the competitiveness of British industry. Whatever he does, uh, I got British industry. <laughs> Good evening. The junior minister for health, Mr. Douglas Wenbys, resigned today following revelations of irregular accounting and racist dances at his home constituency of Trey. Yikes. Reporting from Westminster, Helwyn Ballard reports. Mr. Wenby's resignation could spell trouble for John Major's government. Trouble it could well do without. I'm joined now by our political correspondent, Colin Hay. Colin, a bad day for the government? What an ageing patient <laughs> called Mr. Major's government needed today was a shot in the arm. What it actually received was a bullet in the throat. Oh. I'm joined now by the Tory chairman for resignation issues, Mr. Austin Straker. Mr. Hey, Straker, a bad day for the government? The media always overblows these things, Colin. Mr. Wenby's acted entirely with honour. Is Minister, that right? thank you. Elwin? Colin, Chris. Helwyn. Chris. Helwyn. Mr. Wenby's week of hell ended at half past 11 this morning when his resignation was accepted by the Prime Minister. He then walked out of his office for the last time and left Westminster by car. Which then exploded. <laughs> Waiting for it. To meet family and constituents oh. at his house in Gloucestershire where he hopes to spend more time cultivating his hobbies. He is a keen cook and is also fond of collecting stamps. Like, wow. Too many images, brothers. Sylvester Stewart has today's weather. Starting in the south. Oh, Lord. Devon and Cornwall should have some fairly heavy and prolonged showers, a bit like jagged metal piercing old flesh. Fine. Over the Midlands now, it'll be warm at first but turning cocky later, around 12. And there should be some cloud around in the shape of a whore. In Scotland, loud thunderstorms in the evening, but the sun should come through later, so it'll be a bit like being woken up in the night by strange men shining powerful torches in your eyes. Ass. Buy some blinds. Dispassionate. And that's all the weather. Sounds great. Alan Partridge is at Marple for oh, today's boy, course races. I wonder what he's doing at the moment. Alan? Hi, Chris. I'm Alan Partridge. Horses. Love more hate. Won't be the last Alan Mr. we see this month, by the way. That's all you get out of me for now, though. They're all here mingling with officials. Don't do that, please. It's the 6.30 <laughs> Queen Henry Stakes, which is generally regarded as the litmus test for Derby form. Jockey folklore says that uh, if you cock up the Queen Henry, you might as well ride the Derby on a cow, which, of course, be a complete waste of time. Let's uh, have a look at the betting. The going today, of course, caused moist to tricky. The betting moist diabetic Charlie at three to one, favourite <laughs> two headed sex beast at four wow. to one, and at twenty to one, Mrs. Boothroyd's holiday dancer. All the rest, fifty to one bar. That's all for uh, now. Join us later for the race. Back Hopefully, they don't name the a horse the rest because that's going to be confusing. Got a tip for Oi. us? Uh, I was. I did have a tip, but. Uh, I was going to tip New Year's lad because his uh, horse box was hit by a Volvo on the M3. Um, hmm. Terrible mess. Apparently he's, uh, he's dead. Damn. So, bad luck there. Thank yeah. you, Chris. Now i got to win Stop that one. Eight. That's an amazing coincidence, Alan, because last week, Calatoli's sisters, you were involved in a car crash in which you were the only survivor. Oh. 
only because he landed in somebody's stomach. And it was a rather <laughs> carry night for the pound. It stood at 3.79 against the German Bordello. That's up 0.5 against the Portuguese Starling and down 100 against the bitch. Against Early the what? There was confusion in the markets when France and Spain swapped their currencies and trading remained succulent for the rest of the day. Thanks, Chris. Here at home from tomorrow, the new Bank of England £5 note comes into circulation. Nice. The notes, which feature the head of Iggy Pop, can only be used once. <laughs> Thanks, Kalatli. Oh, she did. Coming up. Straight robot, bro. Bosnian old woman. Controversy over new police shirts. It's blatantly too small, I mean. Meow, looks like it, yeah. That would fit my daughter. And your opinion. Unless your daughter's too. Speak your brain. Firing public servants, do you approve? I agree. In all circumstances? Yes, yes. <laughs> so once they made a mistake, no, no, give them more than you know. Give them one chance, and then fire them. Again, definitely. Yeah. No, you heavily, don't. heavily, yes. Yeah. And who would you fire the man? They're, they're, they're governors. You People above them. Uh, they've made a mistake. You line them up, fire them with their governors. Definitely, yeah. My lord. Hello again. The six thirty delayed due to a collapsed paddock. They're just sorting that out. Men and women here, wandering around like ants on an ant hill. Good to see Platitude Queen, a renowned horse, well known for its sense of humour. Look at that wiggle, marvellous. Oh, what that is? <laughs> two to look out for. Number one, there's in the Darwin's Twenty Hotels, and uh, number three, two-headed sex beast. It's great to see the death catered for by these uh, real characters in uh, anoraks. <laughs> couple of youngsters there fooling around let's hope that that uh, tomfoolery doesn't escalate into blind ugly violence I don't think it will which let's face it none of us want to see well two fat ladies 88 <laughs> old bingo expression <laughs> there although these ladies I'm very sure are uh, not the kind of ladies who you'd find at uh, the bingo hall they're all together Oof. a better class of fat lady god damn look at that lovely girl there chomping on a sandwich oh Oh, that is. Hope it's. Uh, <laughs> hope it's not a dead horse. They're not going to fit it in the back of a uh, Volvo 340. I'd hope not either. No. Actually, I hope it isn't a dead horse. Yeah. Sorry. The day today. Bagpiping fact into news. Okay. The American actor Marlon Brando has been sold today in an auction at Sotheby's. What? Brando, who starred <laughs> in films like Apocalypse Now and Superman, was part of a sale of international works of art which attracted interest from all over the world. He was sold in the large wooden chair he has occupied for the last three years to the Vatican at just under the expected price of two and a quarter million dollars. It's not bad. It's believed he will be installed in St. Peter's later next month. Gross. Dentists. Time was when dental care she looks like Linda McMahon. was free, but now costs are forcing people with sick mouths onto the streets. Last night I went with a team to there. Today. Soaring costs have forced dentists to use telephone boxes as reception areas and the back streets as their chair. It's daylight here and the streets look quite normal. Do but do. when the night draws in like a great dark thing, this whole area becomes the stalking ground for scores of dentists. Up to 150 practitioners can operate under this bridge in any one night. We saw seven of them, all after one mouth. Got wisdom in the back. Right, uh... I'll turn around and just pretend you're yawning, all right? Just open your mouth. Okay. Mm. Yeah, slightly down. Uh, probably a molar need doing as well. Hi, do you need any dental work done at all? Any fillings, hygiene, root canals? Yeah, 25 quid. 20. Done. For the past three years, Hamble has worked Good alone guy. without equipment or basic surfaces. I How? used to do wet polish with my tongue. And, um,. I used to blow on their faces to keep them cool because there was no anaesthetic. Without anaesthetic, it must have been hard to stop people screaming. How did you do that? I used to um, hold their throats with my hand. <laughs> what? On you. And I used to press their windpipe like that. <laughs> <laughs> Night time with the police's undercover social unit. Kid to play with one of these. They get big ideas. They see a swab, they think, oh, that's pretty cool. They want to be Clint Eastwood. Oh, here we go. Our old friend, Mr. Drill. Oof. Now that On my good Christian streets. Drill. No, it's not. It's two drills here. They're both masonry drills. 
And can you be sure that that was used for dental treatment? Yeah, there's, uh, there's traces of enamel here. Mm. That, that sells Oi! Oh, shit! A backstreet dentist and his client. We chased and filmed at the same time. Bad boy, bad boy. What you gonna do? What you gonna the do? The dentist when managed they come to for escape you? on a nearby yacht, but the dentee was less fortunate. Shit. Look at that. Can I ask you how you feel? Oh, it's like a disorientated, obviously. Okay. What's wrong with the NHS? I had huh? my, I thought it's three weeks for an appointment. He's made a pig's ear of your face, you know that. It's just, it's, I've used an illegal dentist. I hardly think it's what's a criminal offence. Well, it is a criminal offence. Well, it's not. It, it is. is. <laughs> the next night, our dentist was back at work. Ah. Oh. Proof, if proof be need be, that it's going to take more than a big syringe to cure... Day to day, aware that while the world they looks cut her off, round, bro. it is in fact a cube. Oh. And from this, we know that fact times importance equals news. Flatter first punch in the air. Coming up, controversy over new police shirts. Fine. Yes, obviously we are ready to comply with whatever changes are made, if they're for the better, but... This clearly is, is not going to work. No. But first, Alan Partridge for the delayed 6.30 at Marple. Alan, either you've just had a fight with a fire engine or it's raining its ass off out there. Hi, Chris. <laughs> no racing as of yet. As you can see, one or two problems with the weather. It's uh, really quite wet here. Really is quite wet. It was just horrible. a bit. Really are awful. Back to you in the studio. Your complaints. Oh, no. Hello, peasant. How do you do? Would you care to read out this complaint <laughs> that you have just written? I shall indeed. Grasp the candle. Sorry? And bang on. And bang on. I would like to complain about the entirely slack monitoring of the shape of broadcasters' mouths. As a recruitment officer, I know it is a simple matter when appointing staff to filter out those with unusual or disgusting mouths at the interview stage. Yet our screens are plagued with the likes of Gavin Esler, whose mouth is not only so ill-governed, it looks like it's trying to escape from his face, Damn. but is grotesquely lopsided. A balanced view from that in a chimp's cock. Surely the time has come for the BBC to face up to this demoralising assault and sack anyone. The BBC will never fess up to anything. Does not conform to reasonable standards. Done worse. Perhaps mine. Point at mouth. Regular, neat, and I've had the stretch marks dealt with. Do it, or I'll ram you up your own fudge tunnels. <laughs> Thank you. You ask anyone in the street what they think of Britain's public buildings, and they'll probably look at you and say, "Well, they're a lot of old rubbish." That's why the day today has commissioned a special fly-on-the-wall documentary series about every single one of them. Bet. Starting this week with St. Lambspool in Acton. Nice. Oh, what the fuck? Whoa. The pool, brother. Hi. <clears throat> um, can we have two, please? One um, adult and a child. How much is that? 85. 85. Damn. $85 for two and a Thanks. pool? Oh, or 85, 85 pence. No, it's not for the phones. I mean, it's just for the pool. Just two for the pool. Well, so many I don't think I've got on. the exact money. I mean, it's only, you know, just Keep the change, it doesn't matter. Keep the change. Well, I mean, I haven't got the exact money, but, I, you know, I mean, it's only a pound. Well, I can't. I, I'm, I don't have the authority to just, like, you know, give you 25 pence. Those pence. I'll just just keep money. it. I'm not asking. No, I can't just... give you the change, I'm sorry. Look, just give me two tickets, please. Well, if you want to keep a pound, you know, I'll keep it, but I can't let you in the pool. Mine up along here, please. <laughs> Lord. Come on, Freddie Mercury, get him out of there. Good job. Um, swimming. Uh, 
swimming. So I don't know what you, what you want. Alors, euh, moi, je... Euh, je comprends pas, là. Je parle pas très bien anglais. Euh, oh. Swimming. I... I, uh, I go... Uh, la, la natation. Uh, you go what? No. You go swim. No! Oh, Lord. No! No, 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 no. No, they're not for us! Not the flop, no! Put them back! Put them all back! Oh, excuse me, I wonder if you could help me. Uh, I've just been for a swim and I just found I've lost my locker key, the uh, ring thing. Have you got a spare I could use? Uh, no, no, we don't two, give out spares. Two, it's 207, it's my locker number. Well, it doesn't matter what number it is, you better go and look for it. I haven't got a master, a master or something. I'm... I, can't give you, I can't give you a master key. I can't give you a master key, but it'll be in the bottom of the pool. Go and look for it. Okay. Damn. Oh, good. That's nice speed up, rubber. Uh, I'm in a bit of a hurry. I've got to go back to the office, so if you could just give me a master key. I'm, I haven't uh, got the authority to give you a master key because we need a £10 deposit. Well, look, I'll give you a £10 deposit. My money is in the locker with my clothes. Sorry, I can't help you. Give me a key! I don't have, a, I don't have the authority to give, give you a key. Give me a key! You better get off to your office. You've got to whip your ass, lady. No, he's no ass whooping. All right, I respect it. He do be strutting. Meanwhile, at the Legion of Doom. <laughs> the day today. Game warden to the events, Rhino. Coming up later will be Microtometer Candy Hell, but first a look at programmes later tonight on BBC Two. And at ten past ten, it's Question Time, live from oh Wembley Stadium. Wait. Let's hear, let's hear from the, the, the questioner, um, so we don't get... Oh my god. That's Question Time tonight at ten past ten. On the panel, Virginia Bottomley, Tony Banks, Sir William Rees-Mogg and Nick Kershaw. I'd watch that. And then at 11.15, it's the day-to-day -day special. This week, CamFam. And it's the whole family of Lincoln who've agreed to have cameras implanted into their faces to uh. give us a unique view of British family life. Oscar! Oscar! What is the golden rule? Hello? What is the golden rule? Yes, you do know what the golden rule Seat is. Belt. The golden rule is don't touch Daddy's car. Turn it off. Oh. Well, Mum said I could. What do you mean, Mum said you could? Mum said you could play in the car. Roy? Oh, Roy? Did, did you tell him he could touch the car? No, did I didn't. What are you doing in Daddy's she car? She didn't, you little liar. Nothing. You little liar. No, Roy, Roy, just calm down. Don't come. Roy, I am calm. Mr. Don't Ted 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 Oh. Get out of the car. Oh, shit. Oh, Jesus. Oh, they fighting. Oh, Lord. Oh. Oh, damn. And after that, he got chucked. a day-to-day -day information special from Connor Hamill. Hey, you! Hey. Look at me. I'm driving my sports car. You sure Going are, buddy. 50, 60, 70. The wind's in my hair. 80. Oh, look, there's a bend. Who cares? 90. Get out of my way, you squares. I'm doing 100, because it's cool. It's cool to drive fast. Of course it's cool. Just one question. Is this cool? No. Is this cool? Not really. Is this cool? No. Is this cool? Kinda. Is this cool? Uh, definitely not. Is that cool? No, that's disgusting. All these people, are they cool? Maybe. Is this cool? Not really. This guy, cool, is he? I mean, probably he's dead, so he's this probably guy. pretty cool. Is he cool? Yeah, actually. No, no I mean, not. This woman, mm -hmm. oh. is she cool? Not anymore. So what about me? Do I look cool? Kinda. Well, do I? Do bit. I look cool? Do I really look cool? <laughs> no. Do I? <laughs> do I? Do I? No! Yes or no? Find out tonight <laughs> on BBC Two. Oh, God. ABC's on BBC Three. Coming up, 500 more uncles laid off in Derbyshire. My uh, nieces and nephews just called me into the lounge this morning and said, sorry, but I'm going to have to let you go. What? 
and controversy over new police shirts. God damn it. issued with these new shirts, and uh, I and many of my fellow officers feel We're never going to get the shirts, are we? It's not going to happen. A week of foul-tempered debate in Europe ended this afternoon as finance ministers agreed new quota rates for trade with the United States. In Nuts. Brussels is our economics correspondent, Peter O'Hanrahan. Peter, what is the new rate? It's 30%, Chris. Agreement was a long time coming, but in the end, the decision was unanimous. What was the Germans' reaction? Because they've been holding out for 40%, haven't they? That's right. Uh, when I spoke to Finance Minister Reinhardt earlier today, he said he didn't like the deal, but he had to go along with it. Really? You spoke to him yourself Probably and managed to did, pin yeah. him down. He's a pretty tricky man, isn't he? That's right. Where did you get hold of him? He was in the hotel. And you conducted a conversation with him about the quota rates? That's right. He said he didn't like it, but he had to go along with it. What language did you conduct this conversation in, Peter? German. You spoke to him about the technicalities of the deal in German? Yes. So what's the German for 30%? Trenta percenta. <laughs> yes. And what about that quote you attributed to him? I don't like it, but I'll have to go along with it. That's what he said. How did he say it? I don't like it, but I'll have to go along with it. In German, how did he say it? Ich nichten lichten. <laughs> Presumably you mean rufen Sie ein Taxi bitte, sonst wir passiv meinem Flur. Yes. Oh, wow. No, you don't, Peter, because that means get me a taxi, I'm late for my plane. <laughs> <laughs> now, I'm going to ask you a question. Did you speak to the German finance minister about the New Deal this afternoon? No. And what was his reaction? I don't know. Peter, thank you. Environation <laughs> from me, Rosie May. Damn. The vast arm protruding from the South Pole is continuing to grow. Oh, All no. fingers of the hand have now fully emerged, along with sections of the wrist. An international conference will be held in the spring to discuss the arm, now over a mile in height. Another pasta slick has washed up in Devon, threatening seagulls, terns and starfish. These birds were among over a thousand found drenched in linguine on a beach near Exmouth today. <laughs> Several basking sharks are also believed to have become clogged up. I'm Rosie May and I'm sitting on your sphere. Oh. Back to today's races. Alan Partridge is at the... Um, oh, it's just about the... let him lie in it. Let him lie in it. I'm Alan Partridge here at Marple with me. Um, just a quick look at the betting. Onion Terror, two to one favourite. Seven to four, oh. massive bereavement. That's and mainly changed. Thirty, this. trust me, I'm a stomach. All the rest, three to one bar. The six thirty has a fifty minute delay due to a uh, fist fight near the paddocks between two officials. One of them now hospitalised. But oh. uh, I'm pleased to say I have with me the winner of the last race. Come here, come here, Mickey Doolan. Hello, how are you? I'm very well. Are you now? Now, how do you feel about uh, the race there? You, you, you won that race, the last race. How do you feel about that? Well, I'm very pleased to have won the race. It was a hard yeah. race, won it by a nose at the end, you know, so uh, it's, it's and, quite uh, what, and your mum and dad must be pleased. Now, what do they think of you doing this? Shouldn't you be at school? Do they not think you're sort of missing out on schoolwork? Well, I think I'll be a little bit old for that now. I'm 33 years of age, what? you know. That's right, I'm 33 years You're 33? That's right, now. But I thought you... I mean, you look about 14. Well, I'll take that as a compliment, you know. Are you really 33 years old? 33 oh. years of age, that's why. Oh, God! Well, what, what, all the others, are they, like, are they, th are they sort of 30... I mean, they're not children? Well, age varies from about, you know, 18 to 42, or maybe a bit older. But you're so that. small! <laughs> that's the idea, you know? I mean, if I was any bigger, if it was your size, then I wouldn't have won a race today. Right, that's why you never see people like Brian Blessed riding <laughs> horses. No, it makes sense. Right, well, thanks very much, Mickey Doolan. Mickey Doolan here at uh, Marple. Ah, raining. Yeah, sure uh, is. News Felch. News what? Music news now from satellite channel Rock TV. Hell yeah. Rock TV. Watch the world over by superstars like Elton John, Noel Edmonds and Mick Hucknall. Yeah. Hi, I'm Harpin Chewport. Wow, it's, it's Harpin Chewport. Well, wow. coming up soon is the more, but first, Rock TV News brought to you by Lastoplast, the Fastoplaster. News. Oh. The work of He's a Singer, Bob Dylan, is to be reappraised following the discovery of a film which shows several of his songs, including the classic subterranean homesick blues, being sung as long ago as 1947 by the singer-songwriter George Formby. Motherfucker. Oh, look out, get the hit on the gate. Baloo's 
I can't believe Bob Dylan would do this. I mean, I kind of can, but not really. Hospital after eating a rotten wolf has so far been unavailable for comment. Shit. Hello, Ian Curtis here. I watch Rock TV every day. That's the news where it's gone. Time now for Suki Babswent with her special brand of things. What ho, I'm Suki Babswent. Hmm. Uh oh. <laughs> now go wow for the latest sounds from the banner. They've been commissioned to do the music behind the new Panty Smile Sanitary Products campaign. Okay, boys, hit me with those ultra pants. Once a month, oh my God! You become a slave to a tidal wave. Yeah, but his little clock Grunge in nutshell. could mess up your frog. But panty smiles a lot. I'm vibing with it. Thing. It absorbs everything. You can wear them in the high screens, but it can't. Thank you, Derp Fauna. Panty Smile, a comfy pal who says, never mind. Hi, I'm Hi. Sinead O'Connor, and you I sure watch are. Rock TV. Oi. And just time for a quick look at tomorrow's headlines. Arafat ablaze in kerosene oyster hell. That's in the Telegraph. Today, go with Peter Collins is not a man. What? The Catholic Herald, eating turkey at Christmas is like nailing an egg to the cross, says Bishop. And the New Zealand Prendergast, Russia elects cobweb. That's it. That's the day today. On the day that they ask the question, are these the real Birmingham bombers? Yes. Good night. It's definitely them. My favorite bit from that was very Freddie Mercury at the pool. Poor Freddie Mercury. Maybe if he had just sang Bohemian Rhapsody, it would have stopped. And... Alan thinking that, uh, that, uh, what, what is it? The jockeys were children. I thought that too when I was eight. <laughs> it's like, wait a minute. How did they get them their people so small? <laughs> Jesus. Well, that was another good episode of that. Um, again, we'll be seeing more Alan this month, but that's all I'm going to say about that for now. Uh, if, where would I rank? I don't know. I don't know where I would, if I would, maybe I'll do like a little ranking at the end of number six. I don't know where I would rank this so far. I think the first episode I saw is still my favorite to this point though, which was episode three. Uh, I guess we'll just go in order four, five, and six for the rest of these. Actually, it is six, right? There's a part of me that thinks it's seven. I just want to double check that. But it is, it is six, yes. So we've got three episodes of this left, so... If you want to see more soon, let me know. That is going to do it for me later. Uh, hope, I hope you guys enjoyed my third reaction to the day today. Thank you guys for watching. If you liked the video, be sure to like it. If you didn't like it, don't. If you want to follow any of my social media links, my Twitch, Reds for Mercy Galea, my second channel for recent reviews, my Twitter, or follow me on my Patreon. If you want to support me on my daily motion, all things are in the description down below. Thank you to all my Patreon for your constant support of me and my channels. Uh, your all name in the description for those you don't know, you can be a Patreon me. For as well as $1 or £1, you get access to reaction videos, as well as reading comments, up to the day early, and your name in the description as well. Uh, also, in the description is a link to the community rate. As well as the daily schedule, as well as the Twitch Vods channel. For that being said, though, my name is Daffrey Steens. My third reaction to the day today. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.